uplift the lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim Robinson. to know. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to Beyond the Radio. I said I wanted these people. Yeah, Beyond the Radio. It's your main name, Mr. David Bidney. We are in a building. And what you just heard, that was the awesome, infamous Gospel Choice Award winner 2017. And you know what? Shay Samuels, are you in the building? Shay Samuels is in the building. Hey, you know, hey Shay, you know, I, 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 you, you know how I do it. You know, I'm ready. This, hey, we have, we, this is a party night. 
This is a party <laughs> night. We celebrate, Shay. We are celebrating tonight. Yes, yes we I'm is. I'm not gonna say yes, y'all. Yes, we is. I want to say it like that. <laughs> yes, we is. <laughs> you want it. Woman of God, I, how you doing? How you feeling? I'm wonderful. I'm excited. I'm, I'm, you know, this is kind of like this is like Christmas is one of my holidays, so I, I feel yeah. like it's Christmas morning, and I have my hot cocoa and the, you know, I'm an outdoorsy person, so the frost is out, and I'm just excited. That's how I feel. This is like Christmas morning to me, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited, and I want to thank. Uh, Kimmy Kim, Elations Radio, for having us and the listeners for tuning in. I'm excited. I am super excited. So Shay, let's who, let's see who else. Hey, I, I, you said out, you said outdoors. That was a new word, outdoorsy person. <laughs> outdoorsy. I like that one. <laughs> that Thank was, you. Outdoorsy. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you, you. you just I made that myself. Yeah, you you definitely a good freestyle. You freestyled that off the top of your head. Hallelujah, the name of Jesus. That came from the power of the Holy Spirit. Outdoorsy person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see who else is in the building with us. True too. Are you in the true, building? True. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. True to the survivors in the building, y'all. How are y'all doing? Blessings, blessings, man of God. Man, we are yeah. so blessed to have you, my brother. How does it feel? Because we 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 went from one transition to another, and here we are, man, with Elation Radio, Beyond the Radio, and Elation Radio. This is definitely a beautiful thing. Shout out to the Elation family, true yeah. men and women of God, and and, and it's a it's a wonderful thing. And, and, and where we just came from was men and women of God too, but. This transition, um, this is how God does it. Uh, nothing personal. It's all love. My brother, how do you feel Amen. right now, my brother? I feel giddy. I'm not outdoors, but I feel giddy. <laughs> <laughs> you say you're not outdoors. <laughs> no, but I, I'm giddy. Hey, ooh, hey, and I know you said you feel good. See, when you feeling good and feeling good is two different things. When you feel good, that came from the pit of your soul, bro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You, 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 so you don't use no old nothing. You good. I feel good, y'all. I felt, I felt that in my bones too, though. Oh, yes. mm-hmm. well, hey. You, you, hey, so look, this is our introduction tonight. Are y'all ready to have a praise party tonight? Hey, Amen. I'm ready. I'm so ready. I'm hey, ready. Man. I'm ready. Yes, ready. Praise. Yes. Shout out to the family. Shout out to the family. Shout out to the Beyond the Fence family. Um, uh, the staff, the artists, everyone who who's a part of it, everyone who's a part of Beyond the Radio, um, and uh, thank God for the transition. Thank everyone who, uh, from the past network, um, and and and, and blessed us for a whole year and and some change. And and, and and you know what, we was nominated in four categories at the Spin Award, so we had a good relationship, and we thank God for that relationship. Shay. Shay Samuel, Shay Samuel, the 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 intro, the song, the I choose to worship. Mm. I thought that was the 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 best song for this introduction to the awesome and wonderful elation because you said. If people don't know, you don't even really write your stuff. You just freestyle it. I seen you actually. Just freestyle. I could be on the phone with you and you just start freestyling the song. Next thing you know, you got a beat. And you like that in that same song that you were just singing, you actually have that song on a beat. And it's amazing how you did it. So you said, I right, choose man. to worship. I choose to because that's what Beyond the Radio is about. <laughs> beyond the radio, beyond the fence. That's what it's about. You said I choose to worship. Yeah. Please talk to us about I choose to worship, not just the song, but but how God inspired you to even make the song have so much creativity in this song. 
Well, um, a lot of people, and I thank you for taking note um, and, and just, you know, letting the world know how the songs are created, but um, I choose to worship kind of derived out of a place um, where I was finding out about church hurt, although I wasn't church hurt. I was finding out mm. about a lot of um, what was going on in the church that kind of keeps us bound. And so um, so the fact that I choose to worship despite my circumstance, despite, you know, being told sometimes you got to sit down, you got to soak, you know, you're not ready for this platform or, you know, what the natural, what the world would tell us. And so the song just kind of came out, I choose to worship despite my circumstance. Um, of course, you hear in the at the end of the song, who are you to tell me that my kids, <laughs> tell me that my kids won't go to church? Um, my my children were very young, and um, and I know you know the story, but I want to share with the listeners. My children were very young, uh, sixteen and seventeen, and it wasn't like how we were growing up, where we were made to go to church. We had to sit in the pews. We might not have known what was going on at the time, um, but because church hurt was so. Um, Prevalent at the time, I wanted to pull my children out of the church, not necessarily the four, not necessarily the church, but the four walls to keep them from getting the same type of hurt that adults were getting and adults couldn't handle it. So I knew that the kids were going to be able, weren't going to be able to grow up understanding the value of church if I kept them there. So at the end, you'll hear me say, who are you to tell me that my kids won't go to church and that the streets will get them and strip them from their work? But I got a reason to place so that means I was praising in advance. So that's how the song I Choose Worship derived. Um, but then there were other things, too. You know, there were just kind of some things happened socially um, in the justice systems and um, political systems. And so just reminding people that we still have a reason to praise no matter what. Amen. 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 I, I'm very true, too. Now, check this out. I just tricked Shay. So instead of me, see, this is our introduction to Elation <laughs> Beyond the Radio. This is the introduction. So instead of me saying, tell the listeners who you are. I knew that that song was a part of her testimony. Amen. See how I set her up? You see how I set that yeah. up? Yeah. Hey, I said, give me a high five. I said, give me a, yeah. five, 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 five. a high five. Yeah, because I know that this woman of God, that's her testimony. Because um, we all been in that space. Now, me, Minister David Benton, um, I did 13 years in federal prison. And I went in behind the fence. Now, I'm beyond the fence. I'm beyond my circumstances. And being behind the fence, it's like, okay, when I read the Bible, you have David. Uh, his, His fence was Goliath. He went beyond that fence. Some people might have drug addiction, alcoholism, um, pornography, whatever it is that's, that, that's a fence that, that, you're, that you was once behind. Uh, the Bible said we're more than conquerors, not just conquerors, not just conquerors. Think about this. To conquer is to, to overcome something, right? But just think about this. The, the Lord said that we're more than that. So to be more than a conqueror, that's I'm way beyond my fence, right? So um, we all have fences that we're trying to go beyond. And so that's why when I when I came home, when I did the 13 years uh, in two months in federal prison, I did from 2002 to 2015. And when I came home, um, people said, man, make sure that you take your Bible with you. And I said, you're looking at them. You're looking at that Bible mm-hmm. because – you know how to, uh, you are what you eat, right? We say we are what we eat. And Jesus mm-hmm. is the bread of life, right? He's living water. So everything that I ate, when I ate that bread, it it, 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 it stayed in me. I, I stayed full. So everything mm-hmm. that's in me, I am that word now. I, I become that word. So now it's a natural thing. Now I'm just beyond who I used to be. I'm beyond prison. I'm beyond my circumstances. So now, here it is. We are beyond the radio. The reason why is not that we're better than the radio. We're saying that's not only who we are and what we are. We definitely go beyond just being radio personalities or singers or entertainers or actors and actresses. We're we're, we're advocates in the community. And, and not only that, we choose to worship. we actually making a conscious choice to worship the way that we worship, not um, we're, we're not hypnotized by how 
TV or the internet or somebody say that, well, this is the way you should do it. God created us individually, and we all have our pathway of of how we choose to worship God. And I think that it's important for us as men and women of God, kings and queens of the world, to just continue to encourage one another so that we can grow and go beyond our circumstances. Um, true to my yes, man, my brother, my yes, my brother. My dog. Yeah, I know in the Christian oh, world you can't say my dog, but you my dog. Amen. Oh, my. <laughs> yes, who right. I don't want to say who are you. I don't I don't want to say who are you. I want who is you? Who is true? Who is you? Who am I? I? Well, you know, uh <clears throat> true to is a survivor. I've uh, I've been through a lot. I was um I'm a, I'm gonna kinda pick it back a little bit off of Shay. You know, for me, I was born in the church. You know, my circumstance mm-hmm. was I'm born in the church. Um, yes, yes. But then when I got older, I broke away from the church. But I mm-hmm. tell people I was church hurt, and I broke away from the church, and I went and did my mm-hmm. thing. But I think it was the best thing that ever happened to me because I found Christ myself. Instead mm-hmm. of, you know, we grow up and we're told. I went to church because my mom and them told me to go to church. And if I didn't, you know what's going to happen. And when I got older and I broke away from the church and I mm-hmm. found God for myself. Amen. So Amen. now where I stand at and what I speak on comes from inside of me. And there are true testimonies, real life living, um, a lot of uh, ups and downs along the way. You know, um, I've, uh, I've, I've, lost, I've lost people in my life that's been very close to me. And um, I really understand the survivor. And I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor, and I feel like letting people know that and being mm-hmm. that living testimony instead of me telling you I want you to see my life and see, hey, I survived this because of God. Hey, you can survive this too. Amen. This too shall Amen. Pain, you know what I mean? This too shall Amen. Pain. Yes, yes, that's powerful, bro. That That's definitely powerful, man, and you definitely have a powerful testimony. And that's why tonight we, we want to let all the listeners know um, – who who who's tuning in? The the ones who have followed, we we, we thank God for you for following the ministry. We, we so humble, and it, and it's definitely a blessing. We don't take nothing um for granted that uh people do do for us. Um, but to the new listeners, we're not as traditional. You know, we have fun. We we have fun and we have so much fun and we give God glory. I I, I see it like this. I was once a game banger. I used to go to the clubs and I had fun in the clubs. So why can I put that same energy and give it, you know, to God? When people come in the church, they need to see us smile a little more. They need to see us pray a little more. They we, our lips should not be poked out all the time. We we understand that we go through things, but it's our job to encourage people because it's for the kingdom, right? So we, we don't want people, because I remember when I was a young man, I used to go into the church with my mom, because my mom was an evangelist, and I used to go into the church, and I used to feel so uncomfortable. Not because, And I grew up in the church as well, bro. I started rapping in the church um, when I was eight years old. So... Mm-hmm. I had a good time doing it. Um, but when I was a young man, I started walking into the church. I was uncomfortable, not because um, I was afraid to be there or not. No, I felt I belonged there. But the problem was that it wasn't fun. It's like, it's like, I don't, heaven can't be like this. Heaven cannot be this tense, you know, um, Children was always around Jesus, so evidently Jesus was a fun person to be around. So I'm just excited right now. Um, we want everyone to know that we love you, but we're here to not just preach at you, but to actually bless you with what we would call the hard truths. The hard truth. That's that's what we want to give you. 
and the door, the doors of the church is open. Uh, I, I, I know I that y'all didn't leave Jesus' little brother out. I, I know you didn't leave me out now. Oh, my, God. Didn't do me this really? way. oh my goodness. Yeah, oh, my you goodness. You didn't do me this way. Jesus how, brother. how did he find yeah. us? How did he find us, Shay? Jesus, little brother, I, how did you find us, man? I am here. The doors of the church is open. My daddy is omnipresent. How y'all <laughs> going to try to leave me? Huh? I said, Daddy, where'd it go? And he said, they're right over there at the Lasians, son. I don't know over there at the Lasians. That's where they at. I walked in the door where nobody there. I said, Daddy. He said, yes, son. I said, where'd it go? He said, they're right over there at the Lasians. Right over there, they just right there. I said, I will be. I said, Well, hallelujah, y'all. How you doing? But, but Jesus, little brother, this is what I want to know. Jesus, little brother, let, let me talk to you, Jesus, little brother. Yes, sir. Every, yes, time, sir. every time we on the radio, you just bust in on us. Now, in 2019, I want to know how is Jesus. How are you still claiming that Jesus is your brother? It's 2019, brother. Well, well, first of all, you said claiming. This ain't no claim. This is the truth. This is the, this is this is this is what it is. It's the bloodline. We, we there. I'm the little brother. See y'all. I try to tell y'all. Y'all don't want to listen. Y'all don't want to listen. Like I told them a lesson. They didn't want to listen to me. I told them watch Judy. Watch Judy. I don't trust him. They you was my brother didn't listen. Did nobody listen? Did nobody listen? You see what Judy did? What did he do, Jesus, little brother? Judy, did Judy cross my brother? He crossed him. I told uh-huh. him, bro. I said, you can't trust him. <laughs> crossed him. <laughs> then he put, then he put my brother on the cross. Well, did you see how that works? Just crossed him with a cross. But then, because that's your brother, you've been taught how to forgive. You've been taught how to. I mean, are you? So, how is the relationship now? Oh, we you give you a good Yeah. Wait, but I forgave. You know, I just, I, I still don't. You know, I don't. You know, I keep my eye on him. I keep my eye on him at all times. You know, I, yeah, I forgave him. I forgave him. Are you still hanging out with Noah? I don't no money. You know. Are you still hanging out with Noah? Oh, man, you just had to think about Noah. We've been fussing all day long. Me and the Tell team in the eleven. See, we were. Well, well, what he did say, I'm going to tell you what he did to me, Shay. Now, we're cleaning up and we're detailing the art for the game. We're getting ready for the game. Detailing the art? I tried to tell him my vision. See, I had a vision. See, I'm going to take the two sheets. We're going to cut the wool off and make some true two jackets. Forget Goosey. Forget Blackberry. You, you know what? Well, this enough. Jesus, little brother, look, we love you, brother. We we got a show to do. You gotta go, bro. Oh, they kick, they're kicking me. They're kicking me out of the church, bro. I see. Well, that's how they go. God bless y'all. Look, you go God bless y'all, lady. Okay, I'll be back, Elijah. I love y'all, Elijah. Y'all got a pretty studio. I love this stuff. Hallelujah. <laughs> Got a good God, bless, I like it. God, God, God bless you. I got to go, y'all. Bye. Bye, sir, too. Bye. What are we going to do with Jesus' little I, brother? You know, I, just, I just knew. I said, we finally got away from Jesus' little brother. I just knew for a fact that we were full, clear away, and he found us anyway. So I'm guessing he might be a keeper. I don't know. I don't know about keeping that boy. I tell you, he been calling me all night long. I've been ghosted. I didn't know how he found us. I've been ghosted. You said everybody needs to ignore him. We done ignored him, and he ended up finding us anyway. He's like he cat. He done fled him. We switched networks, and he still found us. I don't know. The man said. He detailed Noah's heart. Detail. He detailed. He, he, didn't, he didn't tell you about the flat. He didn't tell you about the flat screens, did he? he oh it, my God! Not, he talked about that last week. About the flat home. screen in the heart, bro. Mm, mm, mm. I, I don't. I don't know. I don't. 
I don't know what well, to look, say, y'all. <laughs> let's let's get back to the subject at hand. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that we have everyone's attention, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Peter's little brother surely will be in the building. Um, welcome everyone to Beyond the Radio. We are here to have a good time with you, to love on you. And like I said before, we're here to teach. Let's start. Let's go ahead and get to the point, Shay. Let's get to the point in truth, too. What yeah. does it really look like? When we say, okay, it's Christians, right? That's followers of Christ. I'm going to start with you, Shay. What does that really look like? Like, what did it really look like being a follower of Christ? Because we know tradition. Well, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to go um, not traditional on this. I'm just going to go um, from a natural perspective. You know, I like to take all the biblical um, principles and turn them into practical principles. So that's just my style of teaching. So I'll say that... Um, you know, when you when you look at all the examples of um, Christ in the in the in the Bible, um, everything was kind of selfless. Every act was selfless. Every act was about feeding the people, clothing the people, helping the people, nurturing the people, and um, and so for me, I think as you know, as a follower of Christ, those are the examples that we we um, we would be needing to follow. Amen. 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 True, too. Same question, yes, sir. bro. Like, because we understand tradition and what that looked like, but what does that look like being a follower of Christ? <clears throat> well, you know, the way that I teach, I I have a I have a way of teaching. The way I teach, I, I have a I have a lot of things with the engaging. And mm-hmm. what I mean by engaging us uh, us as being followers of Christ, I believe it's always about how we engage with one another, our fellowship with one another. And what I mean by that, I mean mm-hmm. by ones that are not quite like we are, ones that don't really go to church that much. You know, Amen. we're, we're Amen. a great mm-hmm. fellowship of people that we go to church with. You know, I you know, I know the pastor and I know the deacons and I know the motherboard and I know the choir. Okay, I engage mm-hmm. with them well. But how do you engage with people who are not? Do you show any fruit of the Holy Spirit? Do you love anybody? Do you show love? And I think that's where I think that's where it's at. You know, when I look at you mm-hmm. And I see the love in you, and I feel the love from you. I yes. I know you got to be a follower of Christ to love someone who misuses you. Amen, amen. And and that's definitely important because um, what Corinthians, First Corinthians thirteen, that that's the chapter of love, right? And it talks about mm-hmm. love and attributes of love, and 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 that's what I want people to understand about that. Um. Now me and myself, right? Let's let's talk about it. Okay, followers of Christ. Um that means that Christ is the foundation of our being, right? That means that he's we 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 follow his model. He is the model of perfection for us to live by. He's that model for us to live by. He's our inspiration. So mm-hmm. let, let's go to the beginning. Let's go to the beginning, right? Now, first of all, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes through the Father except through me. Boom. That's one. Then he said, when you see me, you sing the Father. Okay. Now, now let's go back to Genesis, right? In the beginning, that God created man in his image, in his likeness. And blew the breath of life. He didn't do no abracadabra. We come from the earth. He gave us life. We're made in his image, his likeness, right? So that means that we have a mindset. 
we get, we also have what a thing that God blessed us with. Watch this, ladies and gentlemen, kings and queens. Watch this. God gave us something so genuine. It's called common sense. Common sense. And now I know some of the things were, were, were all good sense ain't God sense, and it sounds good, but it's very incorrect. It's very incorrect. God gave us common sense, and guess what? We call it wisdom. Wisdom is having knowledge, right? It's a part of knowledge. Once you have knowledge, the wisdom is there so you can make proper judgment. That means good decisions. Just like Solomon did. He asked for wisdom so he can make good decisions. So you can have knowledge without wisdom, but you cannot have wisdom without knowledge, right? That's just like faith and hope. You can have hope with no faith, but you cannot have faith without hope because faith is things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. So I heard people say, well, I hope for the best, look for the worst. Well, that's not faith. So you can have hope with no faith, but you can have you cannot have faith with that hope. And it's the same thing with your wisdom. You can have wisdom. You have to. Uh, you can have knowledge with no wisdom, but you can't have wisdom without knowledge. Because here's the thing, right? Um, Lucifer, Satan, whatever you choose to call him, the devil, the enemy. He had knowledge. Watch this, and was perfect in wisdom and in beauty. Until iniquity was found in him. Now that was the Ezekiel twenty-eight. He said he was the model of perfection in wisdom and in beauty. Watch this. But still made a conscious decision to do wrong, to go against God. Right? Iniquity was found in him. So us as human beings. We have to understand that we're made in his image, his likeness. When you see, when I see Shay Samuels, I see God. That's not a sin to say that. You, we have to give ourselves much, much more credit. Shay, I want you to um, talk about because you know we we always degrade ourselves and say, "Well, I'm not trying to take glory from God." Now, come on, ladies and gentlemen, let's let's make sense of the conversation. You can't take glory from God. God is way too big. He's your creator. You're not his. You don't have to take up for God. We're talking about uh, the person who created life, (laughs) the whole universe, like like, literally, like the creator. You're not his father. He's yours. We always say we're filthy rags. We're nothing. We're this and we're that. Well, I'm more than a conqueror. I made his image and his likeness. I am awesome. The Bible said we're kings and priests. I'm a king and priest because that's who God said I am. That's not bragging, but life and death is in the power of the tongue. So you have to give yourself some type of stability of faith to know who you are. Shay, let's talk about the filthy rags thing because that's a part of, of, of who a person is in Christ. People say they're filthy rags. The Bible says that. Could you please break that down for us, please? Um, yeah, so I did I did a, um, a message on that before. Um, and just so everyone knows where that is, it's Isaiah 64, um, where it talks about the filthy rags. And it says, all of us have become like one who's unclean, and all of our unrighteous acts are like filthy rags. And so we always say that we are unfilthy rags. We are like unfilthy rags to kind of bring ourselves down to a level. Um, it's, it's so funny because I'm saying it, and as I'm saying it, I'm thinking about how many times as a believer we look down and not up. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. so physically yeah. to show our humility, mm-hmm. we look down and not up. And so, in that scripture, it talks about our deeds are like um, filthy rags. Our deeds are like filthy rags. We aren't like filthy rags. And I like when we discussed this before how you were talking about if you really look at the filthy rags. If you looked as a as a nurse, you know, when I had to change bandages or wounds from people who had severe um, uh, wounds. 
Um, there mm-hmm. were certain things that would seep in the gauze that I would wrap their legs up with. I mean, to the point sometimes it could be poisonous or it could be infectious to the, where I would have to either wear a mask, gloves, and a, um, a robe to even take it off, you know. And so to your point, that's not how God created us. So we take traditional things that we've learned, and instead of learning the meaning of it or instead of educating ourselves, like you said, our people um, perish from a lack of knowledge. Instead of getting knowledge of the scripture, we take it because traditionally that's what we hear. And what you hear people saying is, oh, God, forgive me. I'm nothing more than filthy rags. And you're declaring gangrene, poison, um, Yes. <laughs> You're declaring uh, <laughs> pus and, and dirt that's and right. infection all over yourself, and, and, and that's your way of showing humility, and that's just not right. Amen. Amen. And I'm, I'm happy, and I knew Amen. that you was going to say it like that because I, I do remember a segment where you did break that down. So awesome and amazing, and that's why I had you to do that because – we do have to understand that that we are so great because God created us to be great. Watch this. He told Adam and Eve to take Jesus subdue the earth. He gave us the earth. He gave this to us. He gave it to us. Now the thing is now that we have it, what are we gonna do with it? Right. We're so focused on after we die. You know you, you know that thing that we're so heavenly bound, we know earthly good. We're yeah. so focused. Mm. We're so focused on after we die. We're not giving credit to right now how we're living. So you have people come from the club to the church. They still need to see people smiling and having yeah. a good time. Amen. People don't want to go in. See, this is a reality we don't want to face because we're afraid to say it. And, you know, what we're trying to do, we, we, we want to build up the community, not tear it down. Yeah. But when people come in, we have to make them feel worthy because here's the thing. I always hear people say, well, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. Well, I'm going to tell y'all now, I'm perfect. I am perfect. The reason I'm perfect is because, watch this, I'm not sinless. Come on now. I'm not sinless, but I am perfect. Why? Because he said, be ye perfect, and I am perfect. Now, can, I stop you right, right, can I stop you right there real quick, Mr. David Benton, right quick? Yes, um, yes. Just in Isaiah 64, the new translation, that the new living translation says, we are all infected and impure with sin. That's how it starts. That same scripture, we are all in, infected and impure with sin. When we display our righteous deeds, they are nothing but filthy rags. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. There you have it. Just like that. So we have to understand it. I'm not sinless, but I sin Less. You get that? I'm not sinless, but I sin less. Now, now don't get don't get it twisted, y'all. All y'all who listening, y'all without sin, cast the first stone. Now, we all have that level of what we all feel the sin. You know, for for some person, like every everybody is not going to agree. With your lifestyle. So we're more harder on each other than God is. God is way more forgiving than us. I read the Bible mm-hmm. enough times. Like, you know what? Amen. God, you're pretty cool. <laughs> you're pretty cool, man. But <laughs> Amen. That, that, that brother over there pretty rude to me, man. He's he pretty rude, you know? So I'm going to pass it over to you two, too, because, okay, now, before I do that, I, you talked about the love part, right? So yeah. we have them, okay, we're all we, with the body of Christ, right? We're made in his image and his likeness, and we'll brag about, I gave $2 trillion to the church. Ten, I gave 50%, $2 mm. trillion dollars to the church, right? Now watch mm-hmm. this, and we'll talk about everything we have done, all the things we have given. We'll give our powerful testimony, right? 
but I gave a car away. I gave this one. We'd be like, Oprah, you got a car. You got a car. You got a car. <laughs> Why? We go to the restaurant, right? This is how people make a living. We go to a restaurant, a waitress or a waiter come, and they take our order, and they bless us, and they, they be as nice and polite as possible. And we stick our nose up because we – where our bread at? This ain't enough butter. We complaining, and guess what? We give them a dollar or two tip. Now, a lot of them, that's how they make their money. Why can't we bless them with 30 or 40 or $50? Think about it. This is how we really bless people. Yes. Now, I'm not saying every time, but me personally, I do give good tips. And I have, I am the type that... I, I give a regular offering to the to the church, but then when I go to a restaurant, I I actually have plenty of times gave my ten percent to a waitress. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because they need it. See, they need it. Um. Yes. True too. You you because you talk about love a lot, bro. You you talk about love a lot. Please extend. I know God got something on your heart to extend the love factor. Oh yes, oh yes. You you know um, um I deal with like um I, I deal with love so much because I feel like that is a very very powerful thing. And um I'm gonna take it up from where you at. You know um you saying how many people will say about the cars and the different things and then their testimony and the things they're done. Mm-hmm. And then they go to the restaurant and nose up very, very, very rude. And, you know, these people make a living doing this and we don't bless them at all. A lot of our things that we do is love out of context. A lot of times we want the praise. Right, and that's what it's yeah. all about, you know, wow, I, you know, did you know that Brother So-and-so did this? You know, I've yeah. always been the type of person, I've never really had much, but what I do have, I will give. And mm-hmm. I used to get in a habit of, and I do now, when I do things, I tell people, shh, don't say nothing. And they'll look yeah. at me and they'll be like, well, true to why? I, because I didn't do that for no praise, y'all, here. Here's mm-hmm. this is from my heart. This is true love because when I look at people in pain, when I see homeless people, I, I hurt, you know, yeah. really deep within my soul, and I always look at it as it could be me. It could be my family, you know, mm-hmm. and my love comes from a place that's so deep within to where it's nothing that can be phony because when I do it, I don't think about it no more. Hey, this is what I did. I did it because I felt like doing it. Please don't tell nobody. You know, I just, that's mm-hmm. nothing I get on Facebook. You know, like, mm-hmm. two two gave a million dollars. You know, come on, right. <laughs> come on, <laughs> right? You know, and we we end up getting a lot of things mixed up too because there's a difference between blessing somebody and a business deal. Uh oh, I'm gonna get you with this one. You ready for it? I'm ready for it. Sister Shay, I give Sister Shay some money, and I say, well, Sister Shay, pay me back the first. That's not, I didn't bless Sister Shay. That's a business deal. You understand mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's a business deal, y'all. You're going to pay me back. I'll give mm-hmm. my money back, but I'm going to go tell everybody how I bless Minister Shay Sanders. You That's not a blessing. Him. Now, when I call Shay, and I'm going to do like grandmama and them used to do. They used to ball up the money so tight. By the time you got it, you see the president on that token the deal. <laughs> and they would slide beside you and say, baby, come here. And they'll ball up their hand and give it to you in your hand so nice. And they pat your hand and walk mm-hmm. away. Pat your hand and mm-hmm. walk away. My wife would be and say, look, don't open this up till you get home, baby. Right. And when That's you get good. home, you're like, wow, you know, wow. And then she did it in front of everybody, and you need it, and then, and then nobody out there know what she did for you. Yes. That's a blessing. That's, That's a blessing. blessing. And you, you know what? I want to piggyback off the giving part. Now, we have to realize this. Like, you know how we 
and we and we do want that praise unconsciously sometimes, you know. Um, mm-hmm. People have so much of a low self-esteem. Everybody want to be recognized. That's why you have so much social media. People just want to be super famous, like, in their own life. Mm-hmm. Watch this, watch this. Since we're made in his image and his likeness, I want to take y'all to Luke 9 and 12, right? I'm going to start with Luke 9 and 12. And it say, I'm going to read out the NIV version. And it say, late in the afternoon, the 12 came to him, Jesus, and said, send the crowd away so they can go to the surrounding villages and countryside and find food and lodging because we are in a remote place here. And Jesus said to them, you give them something to eat. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Now, now watch this. People are in need. What we'll do? We'll lay our hands on them. Cause we we want God to do. We ask God, come here, I'll give you your, your bro. <laughs> I know. They're getting a blessing. They come up here and they put their hands on. They say, well, this is what God's gonna do for you. When people don't understand, listen. This is what we have to understand. You are the blessing. You Amen. Are the blessing. You are the prayer. You feed them. You do that. See, we asking God. See, our problem is we want to see Jesus walk on walk. We want to see mm. Moses in the burning bush. We want to see these super miracles. We want God to do it because we don't want to do it ourselves, right? But we have to understand. Yeah. I'm gonna put. The CEO relation, I'm going to put her on blast because Kimmy Kim is that type of person. She do so much things for people in secret. She she don't even try to – she don't put none of that on Facebook. She ain't even trying to – she bless so many of us. Yeah. Like, in secret. And, 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 and then she don't even want people to know that she did it, Right. And, and and I gotta say it, Shade, because it's the truth. I, I have to admit that too, too. It's the truth, yeah. right? She's <laughs> not screaming right. from the rooftop. She just loves on people. And last year I went to St. Louis, and I went to uh, the Elation Honors last year. And when I say it was so. Awesome! It was so much love. I, I listen. I had to be here with the nation. I had to. I, 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 I had to because everyone that I met was genuine. So they fit the criteria of what we're talking about. They're not just talking about it; they being about it. I see these people full of love. Um, Pastor Ernest. Um, right, like these people are loving people. Like they, they not asking for handouts. They, they're givers, and I'm a giver. True, true too. You're definitely a giver. Shay is definitely a giver. Right. Yeah. And 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 nobody screaming it from the rooftop. So we have to understand this. Us is being a follower of Christ. We have to understand. That's why Jesus was explaining to them, like, they come into Jesus like, hey, man, the people hungry, man, so I think we what we should do is have, have them to go over there so they can buy them some food, and, and Jesus like, hey, man, relax before I get, before I get my little brother on you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't make me get my little brother on you, you feel, oh, that they don't that want is. Jesus' little brother to come in and get you to pass something up, so to, to, to keep Jesus', Jesus little brother from getting them. He just told me, like, listen, y'all feed them. It's our job to feed the multitude, kings and queens. Amen. That's our job in the body of Christ. Be, listen, understand this. Jesus is a gift to the world. Right? Now understand, when you have when you when you have a a, a present, a present. When when you when you unravel that present, and a 
lot of times the, the present be so wrapped up, so pretty and neat, you don't really want to tear it. So you kind of like take, take it off bit by bit because you don't want to destroy it. But what's inside is more valuable than the box itself. Mm. So what's pretty on the outside is something more valuable on the inside. So Jesus is a gift right now in this present time. So understand that you are the present that people been waiting for. But the gift is your ability. See, we all have the gift of the Holy Spirit, right? Some of us have uh, to speak and uh, be able to tell spirit support, which is a good discernment. Some of us can speak in um, tongues of angels and of men, and, and, and some can interpret the tongues, right? Some have the gift of healing, and and and, and but you know what? We have to understand that. It's not about this superpower. It's not about us always touching somebody and uh, their their fingers grow back. And it's not about that all the time. Uh, a healing is when someone is sad and you just make them smile. That's a healing, y'all. That's a healing. When when people walk into the church and everybody just so full of joy, and we know that. People coming in for a healing. So you're going to come in, and and some people is going to be sad. We understand that. you coming for a miracle. you coming for that healing. But I'm talking about the ones who are in there, are leaders, who represent um, the, the, the ones who claim to be the spiritual ones, right? And not saying they're not spiritual, but I'm saying if this is what you're claiming to be, then guess what? Much is given, much is required. So because of that title, because of, of, of what's in you, listen, it has to be presented, the present, that present have to be presented to people because you are the gift, the gift lives inside of you. So what you look like on the outside, what's on the inside of you is way more important. So no matter how good your suit look or how bad your suit look, what's on the inside of you will definitely heal a broken person. And that's what we have to understand, us being followers of Christ. Um, we're made in his image, in his likeness. Let's wake up and really value people. Let's get to the point of really valuing people. Say, this this. Because you, you always value people. You always tell them, um, especially our women, to walk out their purpose. Because that's what Christ wants us to do. He, he, Christ wants us to walk out our purpose. It, explain that. Yeah, so, um, you know, I, I, I believe that there are, you know, and I, I use this as an example, but like a garden. For those who plant flowers, every season, um, <laughs> every season there are certain flowers or buds we call them um, seeds or buds that we plant depending on the season. And so, um, when you do that, you know how the soil has to be. You know when to water it. You know where to plant it. You know it doesn't need a lot of shade. And that's what I believe our purpose looks like. Every every person is born with a purpose. Every person has a seed planted in them when they're born. Um, and it's really, you know, I, and I don't take credit for this, but hearing that it's the, um, it's the more uh, prevalent uh, gift that makes room. It's the one that actually is the one that stands out the most, right? So mm -hmm. that gift makes room for you. 
that's what your purpose is. And so, and I hear people always say too, like purpose, when you're doing something you love doing, it's not work to you. Your purpose doesn't feel like work. And so um, years ago, I was just really, I didn't know I was walking out my purpose. I didn't know that, I didn't even know how to identify it because nobody ever taught that to me. So that's how the ministry mm-hmm. came about. Um, you know, I just had a lot of talent, <laughs> you wow. know, as, as women, you know, as, as yeah, yes, I had, I, I had, I, I could, I mean, I grew up, you know, you, you, you're that little girl, you grow up and it's like, okay, so you may not have had the money to get your hair done. So you just learn how to do your own hair. You know, you roll up your little <laughs> ponytail and put it in the microwave and, and, and heat it up and put it on. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you learn how to do your finger waves. You learn how to do, you know, so it's just little, little Ooh, things like yeah. that. But I, <laughs> I hear I hear somebody in the back giving me an amen. <laughs> but you do you 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 get you get a chance to do things that you don't know. But when you grow older, that has to make Ooh, sense to yeah. you. <laughs> that has to make sense to you. So that's what walking your purpose looks like, and that's what the ministry is all mm-hmm. about. So I encourage women on an everyday basis, honestly, to identify with their purpose, to understand their purpose, and to also know where our minds start to be fearful or we start to get um the, the things that, you know, were spoken over us that make us feel unqualified. So really that whole walking out your purpose um, ministry is all about digging deep to get to the bottom of why we're so afraid of walking it out, walking it out, but also the freedom and the liberty that once you do get to that point of walking it out, how good it can be. So that's what walking your purpose is all about. Amen. And understand, Amen. kings and queens, that we're talking about, being a follower of Christ. And all these things that we're seeing has everything to do with who you represent. Like, um as a as a as a person from uh America, they call us Americans, right? <laughs> so you <laughs> as a follower of Christ, they call you a Christian. So yes, there is a title on you. So that's a criteria that you have to fit to, to, to fit to fit into your life. So when people see you, yes, they have to see Christ through you. They have to see what the truth you were just explaining. They have to see that Holy Spirit to uh, to uh, through you. Now, true to uh, in the closing statement, we have three minutes, and we want to be obedient to time. Give us something powerful for the people in thirty seconds. Well, you know much, you know how much I love, so I say it like this, John 15 and 9. Jesus said, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in love. Remain in love, people. Amen. A- amen. Shay, give us something real powerful. Well, since we talked about walking out the purpose, I just encourage everyone tonight to um, identify with your purpose. Don't be fearful to walk it out. Identify with it and begin to walk it out. No matter what the circumstances are, no matter what you've been through, no matter how you've been through it, know that you've overcome. And always remember that God has brought you out before. He'll do it again. Walk out your purpose. Amen. And I want to say this to everyone. Understand that we love you. We really love you. We really love you. And it's our job to do what thus saith the Lord and not to put you down, but we want to build you up. Um, sometimes we got to have a paradigm shift in our minds. Sometimes we just got to reconstruct our mindset because we have so many of the abilities and gifts. And us in the body, it's up to us to build the body. So we're not here to tear anyone down. Uh, it's called reconstructing. I have to reconstruct every day. I have to better myself every day. So with us, even though we may have a, a, a lot that we do know, there's always that opportunity for us to do And we just want to thank everyone. We definitely want to thank you, Lation, for having Beyond the Radio. Um, it's a blessing. We are in the building every Sunday, 10 p.m. Eastern Time.
time, please tell a friend and tell a friend and tell a friend of a friend. Tell your cousin, your coworker, your little brother's auntie, sister's cousin, because we're going to be here in the building every Sunday right here on Elation Radio. We love you. We love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. And you know what? I salute you with both hands. Shay, I appreciate you. True, too. I appreciate you. You got oh, an yeah. awesome shout out to Kimmy Kim. Everybody, shout out Kimmy Kim, y'all. Kimmy shout Kim. out to Kimmy Kim. We Kimmy love Kim. you. Love you, Kim. We will see y'all next week. We love you. Rich on the beat. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to keep faith when your life is in such a dark place. That's why I get on my knees and give praise to my Lord and Savior every day. Life is hard, but ain't nothing harder than being a father, giving up your son. Thank you, God, for the chosen one who washed away my sins so I can be reborn. Lord, sometimes I question you, struggling, and I try my best to do the right thing, cause I'm obsessed with you, thinking spiritually, trying to get next to you, feeling far away, I feel all alone, I wonder when I sing a song, are you singing alone, in heaven, you told me I'll feel at home, follow righteousness, but sometimes I'm seeing it wrong, cross my heart, but I don't hope to die, Give my pain when I'm open, cry. You cry before you died on the cross for my sins. Told you know I was lost, but then again, you told me I would find my way. That's why I cry some days before I pray. You delivered me from old ways. I'm reminiscing on the good old days. And some say, yeah. Sometimes it's hard to keep faith when your life is in such a dark place. That's why I get on my knees and give praise to my Lord and Savior every day. Life is hard, but ain't nothing harder than being a father, giving up your son. Thank you, God, for the chosen one who washed away my sins so I can be reborn. Look, they say real men don't cry. That's like saying angels don't fly. Like saying that Lucifer don't lie. Like saying that so flesh won't die. Now, I don't want to die too soon. It's like a werewolf without a full moon. Like a vampire with no blood. Like a Christian brother showing no love. Nah, none of that makes sense. Men don't cry, that don't make sense. Lord. I want to cry now And with the Holy Ghost It's hard for me to calm down I was lost now I'm found Spiritually free But physically locked down Waiting on my best years I'm drenched in a pillow of wet tears Some say that Sometimes it's hard to keep faith When your life is in such a dark place That's why I get on my knees and give praise To my Lord and Savior every day Life but ain't nothing harder than being a father, giving up your son. Thank you, God, for the chosen one who washed away my sins so I can be reborn. I got a lump in my throat, this is a tear jerker, Lord. I gotta go a little further. What Lucifer did was clear murder. He did things that I never, ever heard of. And that's something to cry for. You're magnificent. Something to die for. Perfection is something I strive for. Nonfiction, nothing to lie for. My mother stands tall when she only five four. Your name is the only name I adore. Had a rough past, can't be one time. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Take communion with bread and wine, body and blood. Lord, you forever mine. Some people give up instead of trying. Go ahead and cry, cause I cried.